You're looking at this from a, a bit of a different prism because you are interested in stability and by opening up the Saudi markets, the volatility is being brought in. I mean, what do you, what do, you do against that? Uh, I would actually say that over the last year or so, uh, the, the, the situation has actually been uh, the opposite. It's actually because Saudi Arabia has been opening up in the past couple of years, index inclusion on all global indices, and the resulting inflows that this has come with, it's actually been a stabilizing force in the capital market. So just to put it into perspective, since the beginning of the year, we've seen over 76 billion rials, uh, almost $20 billion dollars of foreign investment come into the Saudi capital market. And all else being equal, this has actually been a stabilizing factor that immunized uh, a Saudi Arabian market from other market volatility. It is a bit of a drag, though, and a clear force that's working against you when you have these geopolitical tensions. It tends to cause an outflow of foreign capital, not just from Saudi Arabia, but from the United Arab Emirates and, and the rest of the region. Do you have any mitigating forces, any tools that you can use to, to offset that? So um, if we look at it on the ground, we've really not seen this uh, borne out in the numbers yet. Uh, since uh, uh, the beginning of the year, we have seen steady and almost daily foreign capital inflows into the Saudi capital market. Of course, the continuing implementation decisions of index inclusions across multiple tranches, which are likely to continue until March of next year, are a big factor in this. But uh, we've not really seen it uh, day to day. The inflows keep uh, continuing. Are there any government funds that are buying up stocks to help support the market? Because we've seen surprising resilience on the Tadao. Uh, so, uh, again, we disclose all of the uh, ownership statistics. Uh, we haven't seen any adverse uh, movements in the market by any market participant. The only exception being uh, the continuing inflows of foreign investors. So as you approach 2020, uh, what is on your list of priorities to change in terms of reforms? So I think the, uh, uh, the, the big piece is uh, the news that came out yesterday on the revision of the Saudi Arabian capital market law, which is really the main anchor regulation that gives the CMA its powers and under which we create all of the subsidiary regulations. I think we're now working to activate some of the new provisions and powers that we were given in the new capital market law uh, update. The most notable is a central clearing or CCP, uh, which we've actually just issued a draft uh, regulations for public consultation around the same time as the capital market law change. Uh, and then after that, uh, we have two more things, I think another big priority for us is to, just as we've opened it up to, to international investors, we're looking to open up the Saudi capital market to international issuers because we believe the depth, the liquidity, yeah. the size of the capital market becomes an attractive feature for uh, firms wanting financing, not just local firms, but regional firms as well. Over the summer, you removed the ownership limits for strategic stakes in companies, listed companies. How much appetite have you seen from foreign investors on that front? Because it's quite a commitment. Have you, have you seen much of a pickup there? Uh, so we've, we've actually seen, we've started to see interest in uh, a, a quote-unquote strategic investor program in parallel with the QFI regime, even before we created the strategic, the strategic investor program. And it was the demand that we've seen from strategic investors, i.e. those who don't necessarily meet the financial investor requirements, uh, is what created a par what led us to create a parallel system for these strategic investors. And we've already had, even before promulgating the new regulations, we've had several cases where we've approved strategic investors uh, into the capital market. Do you expect a delay either in the IPO of the stock exchange at Tadawal or Saudi Aramco, given the regional uncertainties and the global economic slowdown? I mean, IPOs generally have had a hard time. So as a, uh, uh, as a market regulator, we tend to be the referee for the markets, and the referees for the markets are not usually the best judge of who's going to win at the end of the game. What we like to do is we just make sure that it's a fair level playing field, and uh, ultimately whether or not market participants choose to get involved, whether it's listing firms or investors, that should be their decision. I think our goal is to have a level playing field and open access to all investors and issuers.